experiments that experimentally manipulate the appearance of, of, of coloration, we have a very difficult time finding, a lot, finding any effect on female mating preferences. And we've done these experiments many, many times, but we consistently find really strong effects of altering color patterns on male-male aggression and on the manner in which male signals, males signal to other males. And furthermore, there's very little direct evidence whatsoever for female mating preferences at, uh, at the within population or among population levels or even among closely related species. And so my lab started to think about why this might be, why it might be that we're finding such low levels of female mating preferences. And we began to suspect that there's good reasons to suspect that female mating preferences might be quite costly in the system. And we refer to this as the egg viability clock hypothesis. And the hypothesis is simply that egg viability decreases rapidly following, uh, following ovulation. And the reason we, we began to suspect that this might be the case is that when we simply went out and collected males and females and brought them back into the lab, if we placed a male and a female in a tank and let them mate whenever they wanted to mate and got the eggs, the egg viability was incredibly high. But if we held females in isolation and then made the female mate with the male at some later point in time, the egg viability was quite low. It might be that all of the eggs are, were gone, and sometimes the females would spawn without a male, and all the eggs were dead, and she would eat the dead eggs. Yuck. <laughs> and so what we did is we, uh, we did a, the, well, the, the simplest experiment uh, possible, which is that we went and collected uh, rainbow darts, which are a male and a female shown at the bottom of this graph, we collected them during the breeding season. We brought them back uh, into the lab. We brought them, put them in a communal tank, and we basically babysat the fish. And we waited for the female to do this behavior she, she does before she spawns, called a nose dig. We took that female out and put her in a new tank. And we either made her wait zero hours, six hours, 12, 24, or 48 hours, and then we measured the egg viability. And what you can see is that hatching success and presumably egg viability decreases rapidly as the female is isolated for various amounts of time. And so the next question is whether or not this time, um, this time axis shown here is biologically relevant, and we think that it is. And so I want to review what happens out in nature when females spawn, the female ovulates, she travels to the ripples, she buries herself in gravel, and then the kicker is that she has to wait for the male to initiate spawning. Now if there's one male and one female, he instantly spawns with her, but if there are other males around, then he will frequently forego spawning to chase out these other males. So here we have this little, little female buried in the gravel right there, this male who's not spawning with her because he's going to go chase out this other guy. And work that I uh, published eons ago, um, or I did an experiment where we simply took a male and a female and put them in a tank where they had visual access to either four males, one male, zero males, or a female. And what we showed is that when there are other males around who can, the simple visual presence of other males around call the, cause the male to frequently forego spawning opportunities. And so it, it could take a very long time for a male to engage in one spawn. Now take, the other thing you have to keep in mind is that in order for the female to get rid of all of her eggs, she may have to, have to spawn anywhere from 10 to 20 times. So it can take a, a number of hours, particularly when there's large amounts of males around for the female to get rid of their eggs. So the conclusions are that egg viability decreases rapidly with times and population. And we think that this may uh, be a reason why female mating preferences may be costly if it increases the amount of time required to find an appropriate mate, particularly when male density or male competition is high. The result I didn't get to talk about is that male coloration and behavioral isolation appear to be driven by males, but a graduate student in my lab is going to be talking about this on Monday, so see behavioral isolation and color pattern divergence are driven by male behavioral isolation and darters. And with that, thank you very much.